Welcome to History of Healthcare Information Technology in the U.S., Evolution of Health IT, the Modern Era. This is Lecture A. We will focus on the environment in which health information technology exists in the modern era. We begin in the 1990s and go to the present, or more specifically to 2010, when the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, was enacted. In this lecture, we will examine the general environment, the healthcare environment, and the healthcare organizations that were operating within it. The objectives for this unit, Evolution of Health IT, the Modern Era, are to discuss factors that led to increasing clinical use of computers from 1990 to the present, including the High Tech Act of 2009 and the Affordable Care Act of 2010. Discuss key influences on health IT developments, including the Internet, HIPAA, and the Institute of Medicine reports. Discuss the focus of health IT in the late 90s up to the present. Discuss the role of health IT in clinical and translational research and precision medicine. Discuss why there is more receptivity to the use of health IT now than during the previous 50 years. If we look back on the 80s, we saw that it was recognized that health care costs had skyrocketed and needed to be controlled. At the same time, there was a continued standardization of medical education and medical practice. Informatics applications helped to support that standardization. There was also growing professionalism in the field of informatics. The personal computer emerged, and one of its earliest applications was in elementary schools. So the 80s were the beginning of a generation raised with the personal computer as a routine appliance. We are now getting into our modern era, and most of you are probably familiar with many of the things that occurred in the 1990s. From the 1990s to the present, we have seen a continued consumer emphasis. Companies aimed for customer satisfaction, and in healthcare, many institutions began to refer to doctors as healthcare providers and patients as customers. There was growing consumer and patient empowerment as well. In the 1990s, there were also attempts to develop a patient's bill of rights. One of the biggest developments, and one that continues to impact the future, is the growing use and expansion of the Internet and the World Wide Web. In fact, while the Internet had existed earlier primarily as a mechanism for communication among scientists or the military, the technical protocol that formed the basis of the Web as we know it today was not developed until the early 90s. It combined the idea of hypertext that is, the use of clickable links that we are familiar with today, with the existing Internet technologies. There were still computer specialists, but beginning in the 90s and continuing to the present, we see much more general computer use. In fact, e-commerce in general, that is, buying and selling online, was becoming routine, and email, especially in the work setting, was gaining popularity. In the early 1990s, computer vendors and online businesses, or dot-coms, proliferated. However, by the next decade, many of the dot-coms had failed, and there was more consolidation of vendors. Today we see both trends continuing. Lots of new computer startups, but also a great deal of consolidation. And the pace of technological change beginning in the early 90s has continued to increase. We also began to see what has been called the graying of the baby boomer generation. Those people born from 1946 to 1964 have made up an increasingly larger portion of the population. With improved health care, these individuals are living more active lives than their predecessors, and they have begun to have an impact on multiple sectors of society, including health care. The healthcare environment of the 90s reflected similar trends as of the general environment. We saw the rapid growth of managed care and capitation as part of the continued effort to hold down the ever increasing costs of healthcare. Managed care has been defined in a variety of ways, but basically focused on monitoring and controlling the care that doctors delivered in an effort to control costs. Managed care utilized a variety of methods to hold down healthcare costs. 
These methods included incentives to doctors to avoid unnecessary tests or referrals, pre-approval and limiting of certain procedures, limiting the length of stay that would be paid for, and other similar strategies. Capitation is the way health maintenance organizations, or HMOs, generally operate. Physicians who contract with an HMO are paid a fixed amount for each person enrolled. So if a patient in a capitated practice never shows up in the office, the doctor still gets paid. If the patient comes in all the time, however, or is chronically sick and has to be hospitalized, the physician might lose money. The intent of this system is to motivate doctors to keep people healthy. In the alternative fee-for-service system, doctors get paid a fee only when they perform a service. This system is the way most physicians who are not part of an HMO practice today. In the early 1990s, it was expected that various forms of managed care would grow. For the most part, that did not happen quite as expected. However, the continued concern about reigning in health care costs has continued to the present. The fear of a physician shortage in the late 60s, which resulted in enrollment increases in U.S. medical schools, led in turn to an increase in the number of physicians. Ironically, in the early 90s, there was a concern that there might be a physician surplus, or at least too many specialists. More recently, there is again a concern about a possible physician shortage. One reason for the current concern is the early retirement of physicians of the baby boomer generation. Surveys have shown that many practicing physicians are planning on retiring 10 to 15 years earlier than physicians did in the past. Not only are these older physicians more experienced than the younger ones who will replace them, they also worked longer hours than the newly trained physicians wanted to do. In addition, as the years passed, women were making up a larger percentage of the physician population. They tended to pick specialties that allowed them to have a better balance between their work and home life. This situation may create more of a need for increased practice efficiency, and younger physicians may be more likely to be receptive to technological improvements that can improve efficiency. We now began to see more equality in the physician-patient relationships. Part of the reason is the growing trend for patient empowerment that began in the 80s. The current baby boomers who are approaching their retirement were young adults in the turbulent 1960s, and they are much more assertive than previous generations of retirees. They are much more willing to question and challenge their doctors. This shift is also fueled by technology changes, such as increasing availability of the Internet for healthcare information. Indeed, the population as a whole is becoming more and more comfortable with accessing that information. In addition, in recent years, there has been growing interest in patients having access to their health care records. Personal health records, that is, electronic records of patient information controlled by the patients themselves, have begun to be developed. One of the key foci in health care beginning in the 90s is the concern with quality of care. This concern has continued to the present. The use of clinical guidelines and standardized protocols of care increased during this period. This is, as we will see, a major reason for an increased use of information technology. The aging of the baby boomers has affected health care in other ways. Their longer anticipated lifespan has forced our society to address how we will manage the health care needs of relatively mobile elderly with chronic conditions. These elderly people will not accept what previous generations have been resigned to in terms of the infirmities of old age. As technology has improved, and as both patients and their caregivers are more comfortable with it, there has been an increase in using technology for remote monitoring of patients in their homes, or what has been called telehealth. Whereas telemedicine has tended to focus on treating acutely sick patients, telehealth can include monitoring patients with chronic conditions, or even working with patients through computer access to keep them healthy. During this period, competition for NIH funding for research continued to be strong. This competition was the result, in part, of the increase in physician researchers, 
but also because of decreases in government funding during the 1990s. While that situation has improved somewhat, even when funding increased, it became more targeted in certain areas. One of those targeted areas was the Human Genome Project. This project aimed to sequence the entire human genome, which would in turn lead to greater understanding of the genetic underpinnings of disease. Work began in 1990 and was completed in the year 2000, which was earlier than anticipated. The idea of precision medicine, that is, diagnosing and tailoring therapy to an individual's unique genetic makeup and environmental circumstances, took off with the explosion in new gene-based discoveries. In the 2015 State of the Union Address, President Obama announced increased funding for a precision medicine initiative that aimed to develop a nationwide research cohort who would provide data for precision medicine research. And given the vast amount of information that was going to be available, the fields of bioinformatics and data science also became more prominent. Bioinformatics refers to the development of tools and methods for managing biological data and information. Data science, more broadly, addresses the problems of a variety of types of what has been called big data and includes biological, clinical, and other data, much of which is still in very unstructured form. Significant funding was also aimed at promoting research that would move discoveries, like some of the genomic research, at a faster pace into clinical practice. The Clinical and Translational Science Awards were funded by the National Institutes of Health and awarded to academic medical centers to support translational research. This translational research was aimed at moving basic research discoveries faster into clinical trials and moving the best therapies faster towards widespread adoption in the community to improve the health of the population. As a result of these awards, and because, as we will see, there has been a growing use of electronic health records. There has been an increased focus on using these clinical data for research and linking the clinical data with genomic data. These awards have led to more support in academic institutions for the informaticians who can support this type of research. During the 1990s, the concern about the quality of health care that began early in the decade continued to increase and these concerns were heightened when the Institute of Medicine, or IOM, released two reports calling for major improvements in the quality of care. They focused on reducing medical errors and emphasized the role that information technology can play. The LeapFrog Group, a coalition of Fortune 500 companies, also formed in the late 90s. One of the first things they advocated was increased use of technology to prevent medical errors. This focus on quality and safety, coupled with the widespread realization that there was great variability in how physicians practiced, also led to more routine use of care protocols and clinical guidelines. In addition, there was increasing scrutiny of physician practices. Another characteristic of the healthcare environment since the 90s is that there has been more interest in, and more use of, clinical computing. This use has generally been within the hospital area and larger group practices. And as more and more information was kept electronically, there were growing concerns about the privacy of that information. One of the major bills that Congress passed during this decade was the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA. The HIPAA legislation was passed in 1996. Healthcare organizations were required to follow the HIPAA privacy rule by the spring of 2003. HIPAA set nationwide rules for the privacy and security of healthcare information. There were three years that could be considered landmark years for the expansion of healthcare IT. The first was 2004. In that year, President George W. Bush stated that he wanted to see electronic health records used for every person in the United States within 10 years. He established the Office of the National Coordinator for Healthcare Information Technology, now known as ONC, or the Office of the National Coordinator. In addition, the Certification Commission for Healthcare Information Technology was formed in 2004. CCHIT, as it was called, was a public private coalition to address the problem of assuring that the growing number of electronic health records met at least minimum functional criteria. 
Although it was the first certification organization for health IT, others followed it, and in 2014, CCHIT disbanded. The second landmark year was 2009, when the legislation for the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, or High Tech, Act was passed. This legislation provided the funding to make reaching President Bush's 2014 goal possible. Finally, in 2010, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, known as the ACA and colloquially as Obamacare, was passed. The ACA greatly expanded health insurance coverage in the U.S. Although the ACA did not directly incentivize health IT the way high-tech did, it paved the way for new models of care that relate to the concept of value-based care with an increased focus on population health. The use of health IT plays a very prominent role in how these new models of care operate. In the next presentation, we will look at how some of the key stakeholders have responded to these changes in the environment that we have just discussed. This concludes Lecture A of Evolution of Health IT, the Modern Era. In summary, we saw a steady trend in several areas over the last 20 years. The technology, including information technology, changed rapidly. Patients became more knowledgeable, in part as a result of their increasing reliance on the web for information. During this time period, the relationship between doctors and patients became more balanced as patients were more empowered to ask questions and gather information. Concerns about the increasing costs of health care that began in the 80s continued, and even increased. But a new issue was raised in the early 90s involving the quality of health care. This issue continues to be of concern today. Finally, the use of information technology has increased over this time in the general population and in healthcare as well, but at a slower pace than in some other industries.